right. got the right microphone on this time. <clears throat> we'll get hammering through this one tonight. I messed up bad last time. I, I got through, I think I made it through 40 minutes. I was just cruising through the model and just wasn't paying attention and Dave jumped on. Hey, great music, no mic. So I trashed that video and we'll get back after tonight. So we'll go through most of the same stuff uh, that I went through on that last one. But we're back with that, with the Learning Kit HO Scale DPM Modular Build, uh, doing some customization work where we're working with 3D prints for the window infill slots. Uh, got some custom 3D print work up on the roof uh, with some pipe support bases. And uh, we'll work on those tonight uh, a little bit, but primarily I'm going to jump in and, and work through uh, some of the OPR on the, the parapet. So this is this is the current stage of the model. I've been working through some some grout a little bit, but we've got some roof beams in. I was originally going to have it exposed, um, and then I've just opted to go a different direction and just started getting things set for the parapet. And that parapet is concrete concrete parapet and I've got some samples off there to the left of the screen you should all be able to see um, but what we're gonna do is this is uh, basically uh, a primer coat and then I've got a coat of tire brown mission models paint tire brown sprayed through um, some some filter fabric just to give it some texture and then I go over the top of that with mission models concrete and that gives me my kind of base concrete color for all of the, the refinery models. And then what we've done here is we've worked on just the corner with some, some OPR to start lightening things up. And I've, I've got my oils out uh, tonight. So we'll go through, work a little bit more than that, but you can see I'm getting into the grout joints, discoloring so that, so that when all that gets set, you start to, start to get you know, kind of a weathered look to it. And then once I set this, after all the grout and everything's done on the model, I'll come back and uh, and we'll work in some some masonry streaks for aging. Um, but last time what I did is I, I got through and I started working on the inside of the parapet. So you can see I've got white grout on one side and this is several layers of gray with a little bit of black. Um, started laying down some whites and grays on this side. Um, just to start creating kind of that pattern of the direction I wanted to go. This, this is basically where we want to end up. We want to end up with this this gray mortar look with with lots of age at the base of the parapet, and then we'll have that uh, down here at the base all the way around the perimeter as well. So we've set a couple a couple decals. Uh, one over here on the pump side. This is, I don't I don't even remember where this is from. I just pulled off a sheet. It's got numbers and letters. I thought it'd be fun to weather that up. And then two safety stripes here at the overhead door. And I've, I've put gray grout in on one side, started working through some grout over here, and then I'll show you how that lays down on, on this other side tonight as part of that. So, and then the other piece is, is I've got my 3D infill pieces printed, primed. I got two pins with a, a drain, I've got regular brick infill, I've got my windows done and primed, and then I've got a three pin 
with a drain. So I'll use a combination of these on the sides of this model. Line. We're going to go ahead and glue all those and get that rolling so that that portion uh, is set. And I oh, probably won't glue the windows in tonight because I'm going to do some, some chipping on those. I'll do that as a separate tutorial, quick 10 minute how to, um, because I've got the, the, the rust layer down for steel windows. And then I'm going to do the hairspray chipping technique where I, I go put my hairspray down and then go over that with cold rolled steel. Again, Mission Models acrylic paint. And I think what I'll do is I'll bring the compressor and everything up, up to my model room here uh, so that I can go through that while I've, while I've uh, got it on the brain of, of working through that stuff. So music's good. So I think what I'll do is I'll go ahead and get my brushes here. And then I've got just two, so regular. These are both number twos. And uh, one's my color brush, one's my blending brush. And then I've got uh, another brush, you know, flat brush that I use for some streaking. And then I've got this brush that's kind of bristles at the end or flattened that I used to blend and, blend and stipple and you'll see that um, when I get into the, the parrot but I think I'll go ahead and let's go ahead and start with this other side here and uh, get that going so that you can kind of see how, how this technique lays down right over the top of decals and in this case what's kind of cool about this is, is um, these are real hard to get set into the brick grooves and inevitably I, I get them to set pretty good but this is six, seven times of using uh, Microsol, and I still end up getting some silvering where it doesn't quite settle down into the grooves. So the great thing about this grout technique is it covers that, and then the flat coat ends up really just eliminating the silvering look altogether, so it's not that big an issue. So we'll go ahead and load the brushes up here with thinner. Just a light coat here on this side. And we don't need a whole lot. And we're going to be working with uh, the cold gray. I think that's, let me check it real quick so that you know which one I'm using. All right, so I've got, that's the regular gray, Master's Touch gray. Um, that's what we're gonna use to set down a set of white to get rolling with this. I'm just kind of tapping that in, in that corner. So on this side, it'll, it'll, it'll pull itself through the middle. You can just start tapping to fill in where it did get all the way across. Let's carry this across here. Okay. 
and you'll see how quick this drops right in. And again, like I mentioned before, this this is not this technique is not going to be for everybody. It's not fast. It's the, the control is what I'm after. I don't like doing the the global wash across an entire model and then hoping it kind of works and then having no control to work with layers or anything after. So this technique just works better for for how I like to apply grout is all options options are good Kind of messy, but actually, actually looks pretty good. Just cleaning up some of the excess on the face that I don't want to have to try and remove later. So in a sense you're painting individual bricks, but that's ah, okay. Put that off to the side, then we'll jump on the let that dry so you can see where we're at. See how that settled right down into the cracks even with that decal on there. Again, huge bonus for this technique. Doesn't get in destroy decals, which is you know critical when you're getting into doing multiple pieces. I wonder if I got something there. Let's see if I can use my base here and lift this thing up a little higher. Give me just a second here. Rather than try and zoom the camera down, let's see if I can't just get this higher up off the... so that I can still paint. We're going to work in this corner here. We'll work this corner. And uh, we're going to be dealing with whites and grays, so I think... leave that right there okay and light to dark and we're just spreading spreading some color out here originally to get some modeling you'll see here in a second when I get out my blending brush
drop some white into the joints. You're on, drop a comment in chat. Let me know you're here. Again, we're just we're just pencil touching these drops right in, wicks, wicks through, and then we'll blend blend these out as we get rolling here. See how this process works for layers. Just spreading some of that white that's on the top there. Gonna start adding the next layer up here. And this just it's all random. I'll come back and I'll hit everything with white at the end to simulate that top left pick that I've got here. So that it's got that white stippled look to it. grout joints just getting the, the layers down and real gentle with the brush just moving the oils around and then when it dries it'll be a little bit lighter and that's the hard thing is is always do your your test spot first let it dry out, see how it's going to look, because you can go back and add oils and disperse a little bit more. And it's um, so like th this side here, that was that's my test area. And you can see it's a pretty good model. If I get one more layer of white on top of that, it'll lighten that concrete color up real well and look real good. And once you once you have kind of the pattern that you're going to go with, it's easy just to carry that all the way around. So I'm all getting some some additional variation in this, this piece. I'm going to tone that down just a touch. Alright, then we'll come back and we're going to go to our dark gray. Dropping these on a little bit wetter. Just trying to get these to, to work into these joints. There it goes. Basically, we're, we're we're tinting, tinting in layers, light to dark. Not, not a crazy, difficult technique to do. It's it's random, folks. Just 
working through some, some tide marks from the gray. Actually, those aren't bad when you're simulating concrete. They actually work to your favor. All right, so we've got this half done. I'm gonna jump back over on the, the walls here for a second. Basically, I'm just trying to knock the, the oils off the top. Just pull, just I'm using the, the edge here. That way I'm not dropping down into the grout joints. A little slow and tedious, but this is what gets us the, the brick color to pop back through a little bit. We don't want to completely all go gray. And what you're seeing between this side and this side is this, this is fairly dry. So I can come through and I can start highlighting some bricks one at a time. And this is kind of that last phase we'll get to once I get all my colors down. In my grout but I've already got a little bit of gray and, and black into that so we're gonna work some grays dark grays into this side now and I'll show you how close what it looks like and just kind of tapping these into some areas so that it's more focused towards the bottom at the moment. Seep into that corner. Come back hit this side. Just looking to add that variety so everything's not one white mortar mortar's not white i know we use it to create that pop but it's most mortar is a, a light tan gray that's new and then as it ages it goes to a, a medium to darker gray and so you see you see the brick color is the dominant color, which is that's that's what you want. So that's what we're trying to simulate when we go through and add the mortar colors. We're just wanting to give it that uniform older gray look. And in our case, we're going with the heavy industrial look. So this will get splattered. And I've got all kinds of stuff I'm going to do on this one to show the, the techniques for this as a full weathered model. This was supposed to be my August entry for my local uh, railroad club. And we just unfortunately got postponed. No, no meetings in person, so the contest is, is I think put off until October, I think is, is what, what they said. So I'll keep hammering away on this one. It's gonna be a one foot by one foot uh, diorama basically so get out this one just just now nah, I'm gonna run brush so I can hit the sides
and it's it's okay. I, I want to do these without the the window in because again, I'm going to weather all those separate. And then once I set the window, I can come back and do some detailing here in the uh, the sill that has some rust streaks and things. Uh, just small. We don't need to do a, over, overdo it, but uh, you know, it's some some wear and tear there on the brick in that sill. I can, I can add some of that discoloration in the sill so that when you're viewing it from the top, you, you can see that. Okay, so that's looking pretty good, actually. I don't want to mess with it too much because usually it's better to come back and hit these after they're dry. And just, you know, a little bit of thinner on the, the brush will knock the haze right off the top of, of any bricks that are discolored. It doesn't generally take too much to do that. Okay. Let me check something real quick. We should be good. I hope you guys can hear me. I'll be crazy frustrated this time. The mic's picking stuff up, so that means it's got to be working. All right, so good progress in the in the lower half of that for the grout joints. I'm going to prep some of these uh, 3D printed parts and get them set. So I'm going to set again, set this back off the side here. One. So I've got one, two, three, four, four holes that need to be filled. I'm gonna go with one of those, one of these, and then just two brick. So that gives me five outlets. That should be plenty for what I'm looking to do. Okay. So these have all been primed, and these were, they take about, I wanna say two hours to print a plate, and I can get three, six, nine, 12, 12 on a plate at a time. Um, and this is just showing you that support, I leave the support structures on there that can prime it, flat coat it, um, by using, basically I use my gator clips. Come out. Hit it, rattle can it, because uh, you don't need to use an airbrush for these. Uh, the, the rattle can is fine enough that for what we're doing, you're going to come over top of it with with the same technique for the grout. And maybe I'll do one of these here. It's not going in the model just to show you. Um, but I think what I'm going to do is, I'll, no, I'll glue it in and then I'll do it. Let's see, get on camera here. As you can see, it's as simple as... using rail cutters here no, that's not true these aren't rail cutters these are nice nice nippers and I'm just I'm just going right at the edge and hitting each one of these supports where it's attaching to the back and then they pop right off that simple That's my whole thought in creating these. These, these got to be simple for anybody to do without messing up the face of the model, you know, because you won't see any of this unless you're trying to do an exposed building and then you, yeah, it's a different animal. That's why I decided not to do it because I need to come up with a different solution down the road. Um, I just give them a little twist and then the inside ones pop off as well and you're left with these. And the, the structure, the support structure, I wish there was an easy way in 
Lychee or even when I was using Cheetah Box that I could just copy the structure. I mean, I guess I could. I guess I could export it as an STL and save the support structure as a model and bring it in underneath a model and just combine the models in your as you're doing them so that I could take the same support structure and copy it from one to the next, but I just end up doing one of each of the templates I have for these infill pieces and then saving it so I can drop it in. Actually, I save it in Rosa 3 and then I can just drop them on the printer. I've got so many of them done at this point that I just I drop them onto my zip or my uh, drive, my thumb drive and uh, they're saved on the thumb drive so I can just reprint them whenever I want. The stuff in the trash. Alright, so... I'm gonna drop in... Glue some windows in so that we can do some real stuff. Alright, test fit them first. Ready. Can't remember if I trimmed up all these or not. Ready. All right, so let's go three. Three on that one. Kind of like that. She can't see it because I'm jacking around here, and making a mess of my tires. Sometimes I forget these oils are down on my my table. Ugh. That's all right. Just fold this over. Set that over there. I was trying to keep it on camera and then I get messed up, so. All right, so we go one, one there like that. Custom one there like that. And yeah, let's do that. And then I can do some more pipes on this other one. You can see they're they're kind of snug fit in there. But that's that I mean that's by design. Now you just a uh, little bit of CA glue in the four corners is really all you need to hold these in place because they're gonna sit into that fairly snug and once that CA grabs you're good. You don't want a bunch dripping out, causing your problems. We can get, here I'll get this on camera and you can see me gluing here. I'm just, I should be using a toothpick, but I'm, I'm too lazy to get all that set up. I'm probably gonna regret it, but we'll see. All right, so I've just hit the four corners. enough to hold that sucker in place should be say that it'll probably fall out and next time I'm doing something else I'll hit it. I'll hit it on the back with one little blob just to be sure because we're not gonna see the inside I'm trying to keep this stuff on camera so you guys can see what's going on here. seconds and 
and that one's set. Come over to this side. So I've got the door there. I think we'll do a blank one first. This one's got a little bit, a little bit of excess glue, so I gotta be careful. I wanna come straight from the back here, so that hopefully I don't get. Yep, perfecto. I'm not sure I clean these up. That was awfully. Yeah, I filed them. You do need to file the back sides of these DPM openings, and I've not got these intentionally all the way flush. You can see they're set back. Basically, it's about a scale inch, um, just because I, I like to see the reveal, and it's a completely separate piece. So I, I do I did did do that. I thought about making a, a set that it's truly flush, but these these seem to work well. And what I like is that you can paint them a different, paint this brick a different color, which would be very very typical for brick infill. They're going to want to use whatever. Sometimes, I mean, they'll match if, if they if they can. But generally, if it's a quick fix thing, they're just going to throw in whatever brick, brick or block even into that hole to fill it. Uh-oh. I may not have filed this one. I don't think I did. I still fit it. Yeah, I did not file that one nearly as well as I did the others. So it's quite a bit more snug fit. But it's in there. Alright, so we're good. So I got the ends are filled. That's where my pipes will come out. Uh, water pipe into the bottom for the feed to the fire pump and then two fire lines coming out the top. Um, and then we'll have a water line going into the bottom. And uh, I don't know some other pump or something, I'll, I'll figure it out. You know, Make something up, I'll, I'll figure that piece out. I wanted more pipes coming out of this because um, this will come off and feed something completely different. So maybe I've got two fire pumps. Maybe once, maybe this one feeds a building and then this one feeds the, the outdoor lines. So that's the whole goal is that this is a, a fire pump house. So then I've got these two windows left, this one on the front and the door. So those will get set off video when I'm, when I'm running through that. get some of this other stuff out of the way here so that I don't mess things up Give myself the room I need before I start running my arms through the oils we're gonna do some roof work here all right so just we went through oils over over decals finished out some oils here in the bottom I'm gonna let this dry and set up and then I'll work through um, maybe after I do some work work roof work roof work on the pipe support structures we'll come back and and maybe start to develop this piece out a little bit more to set kind of the pattern of what's going to happen all the way around the base to start telling that story so that we we give we're giving ourselves a, a palette basically to work from so looking good looking good all right now, last stream, one of the things that, that I did is I laid all this out, and this is a happy accident. You can see how modeled it is up top. This is actually, um, this is gonna be representative of a, an older TPO, polyvinyl sheet roofing. Come that, that stuff comes in like, I think it's 10, 12, 18, 20 foot widths. And so, I. I don't need to put a seam really in it for what we're doing because this is all going to get covered with structure. But I've, I've got these pieces here that are, I don't, I don't remember what they're called. They're, oh, what are they? I have the box right here. Uh, they're, they're terminals. They're, they're something for electrical. I don't, I don't know. I'm not an electrician. I don't know what they are. But they come in different sizes. You can get them in kits. I've thought about separating these and selling them with with the styrene stuff, but then I just opted not to, because anybody can do this. I mean, I don't need to be doing this kind of stuff, but 
they're, they're, they're super simple, different sizes, and then some styrene tubing fits into the ends over the tops. What I like to do is use them for roof vents just because it gives me kind of a consistent attachment and I'm not trying to fiddle with styrene that, that, that's that small. So I can come actually come off of this with um, other styrene shapes and connections if I want to and, and do piping with them. It's just a good piece to ground uh, your pipe connections into the roof. And so that's why I use those. But these are all 3D printed uh, steel, steel base plates with, you can see the, the, the bolts in there. This is actually a steel plate on the roof. So we'll imagine that it's bolted through to the wooden structure below and there'd be cross bracing and, and steel in there, but we're not modeling any of that. And then this was just a random piece that we, we went through in the last year to talk about the simplicity of CA gluing 3D printed parts to styrene. This is all just CA, one, one small dab of CA right to the styrene. But then what we're gonna work through now is setting I'll get this one back. Creating pipe support structure that will sit basically on top of the roof. It, it won't be double stacked like this, but the, the intent is that they slide right down into those 3D printed pieces. And I, and I actually sell these 3D printed pieces in 20 packs, I think for nine bucks, 10 bucks. Uh, you can get them with the steel base or the concrete base. So if you want to do something, you know, on the ground with a concrete footing, uh, it's all done. You just prime them, prime them, paint them and go. I like to paint them with cold ruled steel for my final color. And then I'll dry brush them with like an ivory tan cream color sometimes. Just kind of depends on the overall look I'm going for. But we're going to go ahead and cut up some of these styrene shapes. And what we want to do, I'll just set this in place real quick so that I'm paying attention to what's going on here. Doesn't matter if I mark up the roof, it's all gonna get weathered. All right, so I need steel that will set, come up above the roof that I can then drop a plate on. I've got, got my 3D cleared plates too. 3D print, that's the way to go. That's why I have fun doing this stuff. All right, so you can see how small that is. Let me see if I can. It's not primed or anything. I, these are black because I got this black carbon resin. So you can't really see it, but it, it's got the bolts and stuff on there, but these will slide over the tops of these. And I'll see a gloom in place like that. And then we'll set another beam so just giving you a quick mock-up. So that will go that way. And then the other beam will sit across the top. We make cantilever out a little bit so that we can hang a pipe. But we just want these steel beams to come just up over the top. So if I grab my HO scale ruler, that's not gonna help me. Grab this and a pencil. We will just mark That gets me up above the top in HO scale. We're gonna go with three feet. Oh, I gotta make sure I get, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yep, 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 make sure we get all the pieces in here because that would have been an unfortunate mistake. So that we need to go, we're gonna go four feet. So our beams will be four feet. You can't see what I'm doing, I'm, I'm marking, marking steel. What if I get all this on screen so that you can see it? A second here, I'll get it, I'll get it, I'll get it.
can't get this on screen. I've got some stuff. thing about this is they actually don't have to be all perfect because we're not going to glue them in place to the roof yet we're going to we're going to build this the pipe supports and then we're going to come back and once we have the pipe support rack we can level up the top and then set them down into those steel beams and then that way we've got some adjustments that we can do there um, when we're working with that Into the, into the scrap pile, folks. I got so many, so many beams I've been been rolling with for the refinery, trying to get all the pipe racks done. I, I do have all of the primary pipe racks in front of the coker completed. I do have that. That's that's these, and I built a, a 3D printed template to kind of set all these, get them all squared up. Um, so that is done. Um, half of them are set on the layout module. But I haven't painted anything yet. They're not glued in. They're just set in. I've got concrete bases for those. And they're just set in place. And we'll have some cleanup to do on these. One more. One more. and get all this stuff out and you're like I got it 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 I got all my everything and then and then it looks like I forgot the files give me just a second here folks I just filed a bunch of stuff today and I thought I set my small jewelers files right here and they're nowhere to be found this is the disadvantage of trying to keep all your tools <laughs> in this small area for the streams Killing me, killing me, killing me. All right. I gotta find it. I gotta find them. In order to plow on with this, I have to use the files to get off all the burrs from the styrene. Bear with me, folks. another berry here underneath a piece of styrene or something that I was using earlier today okay
Alright, well, this is frustrating. I think what we'll do is we'll 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 build one since I don't have my files um, take me forever to try and do it with a exacto on all of them that's not gonna be that's not an option so I'm gonna build one get it set so that you can see how it goes together. And then I'll build the others offline and I'll post up pictures. <clears throat> Maybe I'll edit the end of the video and post up some pictures. Now what I'll do is I'll, I'll put the pictures on my Facebook page and I'll put the links in the, in the description. So you can jump over to the Facebook page and see the progress. Because I'll, I'll, I'll work. I'm probably gonna work on this for two or three hours tonight after I jump um, off the live stream here. I just wanted to get through a couple of these processes. We'll go back in. I'll hit a little bit more of the parapet tonight. Do a little bit more brick work on the inside of the parapet. I take that back. Let's go ahead and hit brick on one of the 3D printed infill pieces. You'll see how the the oils drop just drop right into the, the three D prints. I'm just cleaning up the styrene with an exacto, not an ideal solution, but it'll work. Now, guess where we need to be for tonight, so that I can show how these two parts go together. basically build modules okay so th these were let's see here that was 13 so we're gonna go with an 18 foot I won't have one readily available there either okay so we're gonna grab a piece of Sorry guys, I thought I had everything out. Okay, so just to double check, we've got our roof piece. If we go 18 feet, that puts us, uh, let's go 20. And then and then I might be able to develop, I might, I might end up doing like a 3D printed bracket, something off the back side of this could be kind of cool too. So we'll go 20 feet. Turn this off the screen this time. Twenty. And we can load. We can load a twenty-foot section up with a pipe. Okay. I'm fortunate that I've got Midwest Model Railroad Company. These guys don't even know I'm giving them a shout out. They're literally 30 minutes away from me. Um, 
but with all the COVID stuff, I've, I've not, I've not gone over there, but their pricing for styrene is actually, it's a better deal when they run their 15 or 20% off sale, uh, than I was able to get trying to work a deal directly with Evergreen. And it, oh man, I tell you, trying to set up um, sales deals with these folks is a nightmare. I, I would never want to do this on the retail side. They're just, it's not very customer service driven, which I, I, was a shock for me. Now, some companies have been amazing, like Bachman. Right? Now granted, they're not, they're not your high end stuff, but uh, they, they've done me, they've done me right. Um, I, I get, I get a decent discount that I can work through custom cars. And I'll be offering some of those as fully weathered models with custom loads here before long. I've got some up now, but I haven't really dug into the high, really the high end weathering stuff on my depressed flats. And that's really where I want to go with those. But I can get anything from Bachman, you know, the Silver Series, whatever it is. And I get a pretty good deal and I can turn around and sell them, you know, and make a little bit of money. You're not going to get rich doing it. I'm not a retailer. Um, but they're good to work with. And then um, Woodland Scenics has been great to work with. They're excited about me getting this learning kit done and offering a full kit. Because I'm going to offer a full kit for this and um, with the 3D printed parts and everything that I'm using to build this. So that those that want to do something similar can buy the kit directly from me. It'll be the learning kit plus all the 3D printed parts. And I think... I th the learning kit, I think, runs 16 bucks, And then with all the 3D printed parts um, that I'll have included, I'm, I'm trying to get between 20 and 25 bucks per kit. I think it's 20, 24 or 50 is where it landed by the time I calculated all the resin cost. So I'm, I'm gonna make like three or four bucks a kit. And But the goal is to get them out there so that people have something to work with. A learning kit can do oils for, for the mortar lines and then work with 3D printed pieces. So we'll see. That's the plan. Okay, so now in this one we've got different different saddles, and we're gonna do the same thing here. We're gonna set, I'm gonna set a double large one out on the end of this, knowing that it's gonna bypass the, the pump house, whatever the, the lines are coming from the refinery somewhere. And then I think I'll set Maybe a double. Let me get some out and see kind of how they lay out here. Let me bring back my raised platform. I need to cheat the system. Um, I'm using my iPhone as my main desk cam here. And so I think what I need to do is find a way to get me up like right here. So that when I'm, I'm, I'm laying these things out, Of course, white on white isn't necessarily perfect, but you can see I got a whole bag printed. I, I don't waste any time. When I get after, I just I print, I print full plates. So we'll go two large ones, and then we can do let's see what'll fit on here. Yeah, maybe just the one large one here at the end. Let me get my tweezers. Give me a second here. And then we can do a triple. And I'll have to look at how these line up on the... You're not seeing that here. Let me do this. So you can kind of see what I'm laying out here. All right, so... There's that. And then we're going to do a double. They won't lay over. Triple. Double, triple, probably double, double. Or I could get a, now let's do this. Let's do a single in here and then a double. Because the fire lines are gonna, are gonna run across the top of this with probably something else. And uh, we'll have something from the refinery, some finished or piece getting ready to hit a different section that ha that needs to go over the top of the pump house. And so we'll use the pump house as the structural support uh, to get that 
that pipe where it needs to go and that's going to add a lot of life and, and interest to the building so we'll go that route and get rid of all these and remember I have to build three of these three of these structures we're going to do one show you how it works but I need to get back down to my, my work surface before I really get see this the oils probably should plan my my works sessions out around just scratch building or just oils keeps it interesting I guess Let's right over there Okay, so I got one here and I want to bring this actually I just I just need the top. I don't need all this other stuff in my way. So I've got my, my roof and I'm gonna have kind of like that. If you can see that. So we were double, triple, single double and I, I, I actually want to mark these so that I can get them close now if I go with my mock up no 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 it's not gonna matter I don't want to do that okay so CA glue this one just needs to be not nah, let me mark it if I don't mark it then I won't get them all the same and it's a simple process of just marking it. Sorry, I just hit my... It's supposed to be a simple process, but... So we're gonna go six inches. Let's see if that's... Yep, yep, yep. Let me hit this with the sanding stick real quick. There's just a little bit of... It's not flash, but... It's like flash. It's the light bleed on the first couple of layers gives just a little bit of a lip that I like to just sand off and get out of my way. Yeah, I really need to get my airbrush up here because I think that would be critical. And that's, you can see the wet, that's all the, the super glue you need. You do not need much. Because it it will it will squeeze out on you, and I'm not as concerned about it on this because you'll never see it with everything being top down. Yeah, it's already set. I'm just a tiny bit off. It should be, yep, got it moved. Okay, so there's the first double, and it's hard to see, but there are bolts down inside there. So when everything gets primed, it'll uh, the bolts will pop just like they do on the uh, the the base plates. Okay, so with the with that, I'm trying to just get get an idea here how I put these together. So that's basically right there at that outside edge. So we can overhang just a little bit. I'm just trying to get a get a feel for where. Yeah, that's great because then the parapet will sit. Let me see if I can mock this up for you real quick. So, granted, the, the parapet's gonna be a little bit higher, but it, it'll it at least see tell you I can even put. Yeah, I can cantilever that far. That wouldn't be a problem. Well, especially on a model, easy to do on a model. Maybe. Maybe a little bit too far in real life, but general rule of thumb is you can cantilever 25% of the total distance. So we're going to do that. So that that'll actually work real well. Okay. So then if I if I just use this, at least mark the center points on my. Because I want all my 
my other pieces in between here. Careful. Single, double. Okay, it's just a little bit. I just use the center line I just drew as my guideline for the triple and you want it to be square because we're going to be running pipe across this so there's my triple another single I should measure all this, but you know what? Nah. I'll have to measure the second one and the third one because they have to line up. But the these saddles have steel base plates. So in theory, you're you're just bolting or quick tack weld to the top of the steel beam. Double that's going to cantilever over the parapet, triple, single, double. And then those, don't know if I've got the right pipe size here. I don't know if that's this, this one. It's the double. Fits, I think that's quarter inch scale tubing. So that saddle fits beautifully. And then I believe the singles is eighth inch tubing. And I don't, yep, I do have one. Oh, this is an off-brand, but then that eighth-inch tubing. Nope, too big. Yeah, I don't have any eighth-inch out on my desk. Um, but the eighth-inch is what fits in the small ones, which is 11-inch pipe, basically. So you'll have an 11-inch pipe, which is a, a reasonable size fire line, um, anywhere from 8 to 14 inches. Uh, for a refinery, you're going to be a little bit larger, depending on how far you're traveling and water pressure and stuff. But that's basically one. But what we do now, here, let me glue these in. With, and what I do with, with these small little plates, let's just drop a little bit right in the center. end up with a bunch of glue seepage seepage popping up the sides and then what we're gonna do is I'm gonna set this back on the roof that'll help me get it up off the, the desk here drop this in Take these. Just drop them in here. I want to glue them in because now we need to we'll set the outside edge of the steel.
on the outside edge. There. So we're just going to drop one small right in the middle. Take these. It's not that big a deal, but if it's set, I don't want to mess with it. The weathering and everything will hide it, which is fine. So basically, that's the first pipe support bracket. And then I'll build the other two off stream. I'll get them all set. And then we can go ahead and glue these in place as part of this um, the, this roof assembly because I'll pull this off here because it's oh it's not set probably should make sure it's set huh but we can what I was gonna say is we can glue all these up here on the roof plan without it being installed I'll, I'll pop this out from the bottom, set it off to the side. While that does its thing. But you can see we'll have three of these and then the, the cool thing is, is Here's where the oil paint rendering will come back into play for the roof piece. Lots of detail left to do. I'll, I'll, I'll flush out this roof. So everywhere where there's a connection, there's the potential for rust bleed. You don't want to get carried away. Sometimes it's best just to do a nice, simple little uh, discoloration in your burnt umbers, raw siennas, so that in yellows, yellow ochre so that you can start simulating rust is starting and that maybe they just recently painted within the last six months. and But the rust is starting to seep back through. And then down here at the, the, the base of the steel plates, we can do some staining and stuff around, you know, the bases of these with, with some small rust uh, splatter areas there as well. Uh, but there's just a lot to work with. And then every time the pipe hits one of these racks, is an opportunity uh, for that movement of the pipe for wear and tear um, to, to, to have rust streaks seep down on the saddle. So there's just lots of places there. So we'll work through that as we set our, our piping up on top. And again, this whole piece, this will be full of pipes across the top of the roof uh, for us, for us on our refinery pump house. All right, so then I said we we're going to go ahead and hit one of the... I don't even know what time it is, guys. No idea how long we've been going. 10.15. All right, so what I'll do is I'll go ahead and I'm going to, I'm going to hit the, the, uh, the end cap or the infill pieces here. I'll do that one right there since you can see it. Get my... So what we're doing, we can leave that right there. Blending brush, oil brush. dropping some oil into that so that it'll spread nice and easy. I want you to kind of see how quick this. And again, we're gonna go gray. Get some orange in there.
you see how that mortar sets down in there real nice. I wish the whole DPM model was like this, honestly. But that's the advantage of, of 3D printing. At least I know these pieces. I can add more paint. And we probably won't do a whole lot with with any major discoloration on on the infills because they they would have been done later. I haven't really decided if the infills become kind of part of the original structure and you know were filled filled long time ago kind of thing, which might be possible, but it doesn't make sense for these that would be associated with just the pipe, the, the, the fire pump house. Uh, they would have been added later, um, but this one could have been added before um, those for some reason. But you can see that that mortar sets down in nice, nice and clean, and, and we can come in and you've got you've got work time, so it's not like you have to, to clean everything up right away. I mean, if you want to come in and, and pull some of the grays off the top of these bricks you can um, I'm just checking the screen yeah you should be able to see that real well so that 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 comes in real well so here's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go ahead and I'll do the rest of this off screen and I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna get the all the mortar and everything done all the way around and I'll go back and I'll clean up some of the brick before on the top so that you can kind of see where it's at and 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 I'll shoot some some pictures that that don't necessarily capture because it looks like these are real dirty on the screen but the, the reality is is they're actually fairly fairly clean but I'll, I'll get some more work in cleaning up the face of the bricks and, and working through that um, and get that wrapped up and then I'll also get the rest of the pipe racks done get that whole piece set and ready and I don't know if I'll spray on screen or if I'll go ahead and paint most I probably paint everything off screen and then go ahead and do all the the roof the final roof touches and oil paint rending for detailing out the roof is the this is the last live stream piece um, and then I can and then that way everything's together and when we're getting closer with finishing this build so if you got any questions about about the, the 3d print process oil paint rendering um, feel free to, to drop a comment um, below if there's something in particular that you want me to cover that's 3d print related um, and or another uh, dynamic preservation models kit that you want me to work through um, I have a couple um, but I'm certainly happy to, to grab another one and work through and do some custom stuff to another kit it's kind of another series of, of three or four videos on implementing 3d print pieces so that's all I'm gonna do for uh, tonight I appreciate you guys hanging out uh, that jumped in today. Um, if you um, want to jump over to the Facebook page, I tend to post stuff over there fairly regularly. Um, but do me a favor, subscribe to the channel, thumbs up, share share the content so that I can continue to grow the channel and uh, keep coming back to you guys with more content. I think the next one will be uh, a 10 minute, we'll do a 10 minute how to on probably the concrete. Um, that might be the, the next best one for me to knock out in 10 minutes. I can come in with some pre pre painted and, and show the three steps of the process of that and knock that out fairly quick. So I got my work cut out for me. I'm going to uh, model away for a couple more hours tonight. Um, see how much I can get done. And then I'll, uh, I'll go ahead and post some pics over.